So right here is where your receiver will be, the one that comes with it, with these two holes being filled with antennas that come out, right? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take all of that stuff out of there. You want to get rid of the receiver entirely. And the way that um, iFlight likes to do their flight controllers is with plugs. So you have all of those plugs down in there, right? So you just unplug it and just completely take it out of here so you have nothing in here. And it'll look like this when you do that, completely empty. But the next thing you'll need to do is get yourself um, an ELRS receiver. If you are a beginner and you really don't like to solder or anything like that, iFlight makes these receivers that have plugs in them and I highly recommend that because it's a lot easier to just plug something in. A couple things about receivers I didn't mention is you're probably not going to want to get this one with a flat ceramic antenna like this. You'll probably want to get one that has a long antenna that sticks off the back um, because this one just doesn't fit well in this quad and it gets covered up, right? It gets covered by this. And I've noticed that I just don't have as good of connection as I could be getting out of ELRS. So I'm going to be switching mine. And one option would be just like your old receiver to have the antenna sticking out through these holes. Or what I recommend is having it, the wire come down through here and then sticking in like a T-shape out of the back. It's also absolutely crucial that um, whatever receiver you get is the same protocol as the module you have in your controller. So if you get a 2.4 gigahertz receiver, you also need to have 2.4 gigahertz module. Or if you do 915 megahertz, you know, they both have to be 915 megahertz. You can't cross the two. You might be able to plug it into the flight controller down here in that middle port, but it's not that likely. I tried it and I couldn't get it to work, so I did have to solder, but I'm gonna explain that um, so you can still do it yourself. So when you solder to the board, just to avoid any complications, I would just copy exactly what you see here. So this, this isn't the best solder job. I'm not great at it, but it works. So the black cord there is on a ground pad. The red one is on a five volt pad. And then the TX is the yellow and it's on an R, R4. And then the white is an RX and it is on the TX. Can't really see that. But if you just copy this exactly, then you won't have any issues. It'll be the same thing. What you want to make sure is that whatever you are you're choosing, it's the same for both of these wires, right? So that's R4 and that's T4. They're both on four, so they'll work. And then if you do go with one of these receivers, you can't really go wrong because it's just plugged in so it'll automatically have it correct for you. But if you were to solder onto there, it's with all receivers, you have to have the TX cable go to the RX on the flight controller and the RX go to the TX on the flight controller. Once you have it on, what you'll wanna do is plug it in the battery and you'll see a light there. It might be solid, it might be flashing, but you just want them to see a light because that will let you know if uh, if it's receiving power. Whenever you're working on your quad like this, you should take off the propellers, um, especially when you're plugging into beta flight, um, because you never know if these things just started up. You could lose a finger, <laughs> could get seriously injured, so it's not worth it. Um, when you're doing the actual work, take your propellers off. So you just need to plug your quad in then once it's up on beta flight, you'll need to come to the ports tab over here. Because we put it on four, remember we did R4 and T4, this would be UART4. So we'll come over to the ser serial RX section and turn that on. That's basically letting the quad know that there's something here that, that's being used. So next you'd come to the receiver tab and then over here where it says receiver, you need to select Serial UR. It'll probably start out on this one, the SPI, which you're not on anymore. So you want to do 
serial, right? Because you're using a UART. And then, although this doesn't make much sense, because we, we're doing ELRS, um, you need to select crossfire because that's what your um, control is going to recognize it as. So we select crossfire and then turn on telemetry. And of course you want to save these things. Whenever you're doing these things, you gotta hit save. Also while we're here, I would go to your OSD and whenever you're using um, ELRS, you're gonna want your link quality turned on. That's this right here, because that's gonna tell you how strong um, the connection is. This 100 is like 100% connected, right? So now that it's completely set up in beta flight, um, what you're gonna need to do is get your controller ready to go. And I'm gonna link below um, an extremely helpful video by Joshua Bardwell that explains how to do that. If you um, don't know already, and if you don't have the correct setup, the video will explain everything in its entirety that you need to know about ExpressLRS. What you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to go to your models and on this drones model, I'm just gonna go to the setup page and scroll until you see external RF or internal RF. So if you have a controller like this one that has ELRS built into it, you'll be on the um, internal RF. But if you have an external module on the back of your controller that goes in like this bay here, then you would have it on external RF. And um, it's important that whichever one you're not using, you have it shut off. But for the one that you are using, you want it to be um, set up like this, right? With crossfire. So. Here's the off option, and then here's the one that you need in order to connect. So if you follow the steps in Joshua's video, um, you'll get to a place where you're, it's looking like this on your controller, right? And um, when you select Express LRS, um, what you would do is you'd go down to bind. And then from here, I'm gonna show you the method that I've always done because I've tried the flashing and the all of the different options that you can do through the computer and it was just it was a headache to me and I didn't understand it so what I always did is I did the plug method which people don't always recommend again make sure that you don't have propellers on if you're actually doing this and the method is this, you plug it in once, pull it out, once you see that light flash. And then you plug it in again, pull it out, plug it in the third time, and on the third time it'll start slowly blinking, and that'll indicate that it's ready to be bound. So the, the pacing, you might take like two tries, um, but basically it's just like in, 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 and then it'll start blinking. Then after you got it slowly flashing, what you would want to do is you'd come in here and you'd click bind. And then when it's bound, it'll have that C there. And if you return back to your main page, it'll have that, those little bars, which is like kind of like Wi-Fi looking, but it means that there's a connection between the controller and the drone. And also there will just be a solid light there instead of a blinking one.